This video is a tutorial for the mount and display pad. The mount and display pad uses a software program called the Basecamp. This is the icon. I have it on my taskbar, but I'm going to slide over to the start menu and we're going to scroll until we get to the mountain folder. And here's the mountain Basecamp folder. If I click it and I double click it, it'll launch the software. If we select customize, we can see all the profiles that I've added. By default, the profile will just have a number, but if I wanted to add an icon, I would just click on here. These are some of the icons I've used. Yours might not have all of these icons, but it would come with these icons here. I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't wanna change the icon. If I go to basic setup, and then I go to key bindings. We can tell that these icons represent software programs. So if I clicked on the PR, it would launch Premiere Pro. If I clicked on Firefox, it would launch Firefox. If I click on Firefox right now, it says run program. And it also has Firefox EXE. You find the executable file for the software programs. You can find the executable files by clicking on your C drive. As you can tell, this is the C drive. If I scroll down until I get to the program files, which is right here, or even the program files times 86, that's where you'll find the executable files. For example, if I click program files and I go into Adobe, and then I scroll down until I get to something like Adobe InDesign and I click on it and I keep scrolling, I'm going to see the Adobe InDesign executable file right here. If I go to this icon here, which is the Basecamp icon, as you can tell, I have run program. And if I go to browse, it's the Basecamp EXE icon. See, so you'd go to your C drive, go to program files, go to the Mountain Base Camp, and then you find the EXE file. I know some of you are thinking, can't you use this device with the OBS software? The answer is yes. What I would do is go to the profiles and I would select OBS. Then I would select binding. And here you can see where I have things set up for the OBS software. I have this icon here, which is to mute the microphone. If this pops up, all the information that you need for this is in the OBS software. So I'm going to launch the OBS software. What you're going to do is go to where it says tools. You're going to go down to WebSocket server. This will pop up. You're going to hit show connect information where it says server port where it says server password, this is the information you need. Everything should work now. If you notice, there's a lot of different options, but we just wanna focus on OBS Studio. Over here, there's a lot of different options as well, but we wanna focus on the volume. And then once we select volume, we want to select mute mic. If we go to this, button it's the same thing but it's unmute mic which is just the opposite because you want to be able to mute the mic and unmute the mic when you're live streaming if we go to this button we still got the obs studio but we've opted for scene and when we go to the different scenes it's the top screen on this button here it is the bottom screen if I switch between the different screens using the display pad, which is what I'm doing right now, you can tell it works. If I hit the mute mic, you can tell that the mic auxiliary turned to black and white. If I hit unmute mic, it turns back to color. Some of you are probably wondering if the mountain display pad can work with OBS by Streamlabs. The answer is yes. I would have to click on the profile and go to key bindings. And it looks similar to what I had for OBS Studio. But if I click on the top screen, 
As you can tell, it's using keyboard shortcuts instead of using the actual scenes within the software. You can tell for top screen, it's number pad plus zero. For the bottom screen, it's number pad plus one. You have to set up the keyboard shortcuts within the software itself. The problem with using keyboard shortcuts is the fact that it can interfere with other software programs. Right now, I'm switching between the two different desktops or my two different monitors, and you can tell it's affecting the YouTube page. I'm going to click on the demonstration profile because it's a little bit different. If we go to key binding, we can tell that I have the software that's related to hardware right here. And if I click on this folder for Adobe, we can tell I have some Adobe programs there. If I double click on this icon, it's going to bring us right back to where we were. Some of you might be wondering, how do you create folders? It's really super easy. I'll click on this button. By default, it will say no function. All I do is select create folder, name the folder. I'll name it programs. Here you have the option to change the font, change the size. You could put it at the top, bottom, or center. I'm just going to click out of that. You can also change the icons. Like I said, these are icons that I've used, so that's why those show up. But you'll have access to all these icons. Everything looks fine, so I'm going to cancel out. But there we have another folder icon. Now if I click on this double click, it's going to by default have that so you can get right back to where you were if you double click again. I wanted to demonstrate that it's really super easy to rearrange the layout. All you do is drop and drag. If I click on settings, you can change the brightness of the display pad. You can change the image when your computer boots up. I leave it in the default. It's just the mountain logo. If your computer goes to sleep, the display pad will also go to sleep, which is really nice. But if you're going to use your computer for five or six hours a day and you don't use the display pad every day, you can select to have it shut off after five minutes, 10 minutes, a half hour. I think that's kind of a cool feature. And I think this is a good place to end the tutorial for the mountain display pad.